Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. This is week two of the blocks and we're going to do block three and four this week. The first one, block three, is layers of squares and it finishes at 12 inches. Here's the diagram. This is a three by three grid, so there are three units across and three units down. And the corner units are the half square triangles and squares, so they go in each of the four corners. The flying geese pairs make the side units, and then the center unit is the square on point. Here are the patches. Patch A is a two inch finished square. We cut two and a half inch squares and we need four patches. These are the four corners of the corner units. Patch B is a two inch finished half square triangle. We cut two and seven eighth inch squares, cut them in half once on the diagonal and you'll have two patches. And these are used for the half square triangles in the corner units. They're also used for the sky portion of the flying geese in the, in the center units. Patch C is a four inch finished quarter square triangle. We cut a square that's five and a quarter inches. We cut it in half twice on the diagonal for four patches. The quarter square triangle is the geese part of the flying geese unit. So we'll need four patches or one square of the background fabric and four patches or one square of the flying geese fabric. And then the final patch D is a four inch finished square on point. We cut one square three and three eighth inches. And there are AccuQuilt dies that will cut all of these shapes. I have cutting instructions here listed by fabric. So this is the background fabric and it is in patch A, B, C, and D, so it's in all the patches. And this tells you how to cut them for each one. For patch A, you cut four two and a half inch squares. For patch B, you'll cut 10 squares at two and seven eighth inches. For half square triangles, two at a time, and for flying geese, four at a time. Or if you're cutting patches, you'll need to cut them in half once diagonally for 20 patches. Patch C is one square at five and a quarter inches. This is the geese portion of one set of flying geese. It's for the flying geese four at a time, or cut it in half diagonally twice for four patches. So if this is confusing, I'm giving you the choices here. If you rotary cut, you can cut squares for doing four at a time flying geese, or doing two at a time half square triangles, or you can simply cut the patches and sew the, the patches together into the units. In patch D, you cut one three and three eighth inch square, and that's for the square on point. And for the other fabrics, here are the cutting instructions. And these are either going to be for half square triangles or flying geese. Now let's look at the fabrics. This is patch A, it's the two inch finished square. These go in the corner units, in the very corner of each unit. These are the two and seven eighth inch squares. This is patch B for the half square triangles. And I've separated them out. These are going to be for the half square triangles and we're going to do two at a time. The reason I do two at a time is because I'm just making one block. If I were making several blocks, I would probably do eight at a time or use triangle papers. And here is, we have patch B. These are the two and seven eighth inch squares and the, this is the quarter square triangles. So this is the sky portion of this flying geese. This is the sky portion of this flying geese. We'll have two sets of flying geese and we'll stitch them four at a time each. Here is the square on point for the center and we'll cut these in half to get four triangles and they'll go around the sides. So we're going to start. Step one, we're going to use the four B patches and the D patch and make the square and square unit. If you're not familiar how to make this unit, the tutorial will be at the end of this video. The square on point unit is done and we'll put that to the side. For step two, we're going to use the B and C patches or squares and make four of each of these flying geese units. 
We're going to use the four at a time method to make flying geese. If you're not familiar with this method, stay tuned for a short tutorial that will show you how. For flying geese four at a time, you need one large square and four small squares. The large square is the geese part of the flying geese and the small squares are the sky part of the flying geese. On the back of each of the small squares, draw a diagonal line. Place two of the small squares like this on the large square, right sides together. You line up these edges and make sure these lines line up. Then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. Here are the two stitching lines on either side of the marked line and now we cut it in half on the marked line. Now you'll open these up and press your seams open on both sides. Cut off the nubs. Now you'll place another square in this corner. Here's your diagonal line and stitch on either side of the diagonal line. And do that for both of these. When you're stitching, your stitches should come out or start right at this point, this intersection here, this 90 degree angle. Cut this in half on the diagonal line and you have these two. Press your seams open and cut off your nubs. And do the same for this one. Four flying geese. For step three, we're going to take the flying geese units and lay them out like this. And so pay attention to the, the fabric placement and also where the points are going. So the points are going outward. So we'll take this flying geese will go at the top and this one will go at the bottom like this. When you stitch these two units together, you'll want these seams to meet at a point right at this seam line and over here as well. It seems like I get one that works out almost perfectly and the other one is just a few threads off, but I don't, that doesn't bother me about the few threads. So here's how you do this. We have the pieces of fabric like this and what you're going to do are when you flip this over, you're going to stack this seam and that seam on both sides. So flip this over and you'll need to come out all the way to the edge, match the edges and the top, and then match your seam line. And it's called stacking the seams. So you can feel it with your finger, but you can also fold this top one back without moving it and then align it like this. So it, the seam lines are all aligned and then they, they need to match like this. You can put some glue on there or put a pen. A pen might move it out of the way a little bit. You can put a little dab of glue on there to help you with that and do that on both sides. And stitch them together and press the seams open. For step four, we're going to take the B patches R squares and make 12 half square triangle units like this. If you prefer, you can use any other method you like to make the half square triangles, such as triangle papers or any kind of special tool you have. I'm going to use the two at a time method. If you're not familiar with this method, stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how. On the back side of the light fabric, we're going to draw a diagonal line, put the fabrics together, right sides together, and we're going to stitch on either side of the diagonal line. Here is the diagonal line drawn and then the stitching on both sides. Now we cut this in half along the diagonal line. Then we have our two half square triangles. Press the seams open and cut off the nubs. Now that the half square triangles are ready, we're going to piece the corner units. We just look at the diagram in step five and lay the pieces out like this and we'll make four of these. So all the triangles are facing in the same direction and then we put a plain square which is patch A in the corner like this. You'll sew these two together and these two, press the seams and then sew the rows together and make four of these. We have all of our different units, three different units complete. Now we're just going to put them together. Remember we said this was a three by three grid. We'll put three across and three down. 
and three times three is nine, so we have nine units. And at this point, each of the units will measure four and a half inches. So that would be four inch finished with, along with the seam allowance. Now we'll just put the block together on the profit board. And there's our three by three grid. We'll sew the top units together, the middle and the bottom, press your seams, and then stitch the rows together. As you stitch these units together, especially these flying geese to the half square triangles, you want to make sure that these points match. And you also have the matching here at the square on point with the flying geese units. The tutorial at the end of this video about the square on point will have information about how you use a pin to match these points so you won't cut off your points. Now let's move on to block number four. For block number four, I just call it a star block. Here is the diagram, and this is also a three by three grid, three across and three down, so we'll have nine individual units. The first unit is a four patch, and this goes in the corners. The second unit is a triangle and square, and these go on the side. There are four of those and four of the four patches. And then the last one is the square on point that goes in the center. Here are the patches. Patch A is a two inch finished square. These make the four patches in the corner. We'll need eight patches and we'll cut each at two and a half inches. Here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this. I also have instructions over here if you want to strip piece these instead of cutting patches. There, here's what you cut here. For the four inch finished triangle and square, the rotary instructions will be on this side over here. For patch B, these are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut them, and patch C and CR, these are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut those. Patch D is a two inch finished half square triangle. We cut two and seven eighth inch squares, and we cut them in half once on the diagonal. And we will need four patches. This is for the background of our square on point, right in the center unit. And then finally, patch E is the square on point, four inch finished. We'll cut one square at three and three eighth inches, and we just need one. Now let's look at the patches and the fabric. This is patch A for the four patch unit, and this is patch A for the four patch unit. This is the square on point, which is patch E, and this is patch B, which is the triangle and the triangle and square, and this is C and C reversed for the sides of the triangle and square. Here are the cutting instructions. For patch A, we'll cut from these two fabrics a background and an accent. We'll cut eight two and a half inch squares, or for strip piecing, cut one two and a half inch times 21 inch piece of fabric. And you'll do this cutting for each of these. So you'll have a total of two strips and a total of 18 squares for this patch A. Patch B, which is the triangle part of the triangle and square, we'll cut one at four and a half inches times 15 inches. Use the tri ruler to cut four patches. And for patch D, we cut two at two and seven eighth inch squares, cut in half once diagonally for four patches. And this patch D is the corners of the square on point. Patch C and C R are the sides of the square on point here. We'll cut one at four and a half inches times 14 inches. You fold it in half with the wrong sides together. Use the Rex ruler to cut four sets of side triangles. These triangles here, each one of these is a set, a left and a right. And finally for patch E, this is our square on point. We cut one at three and three eighth inch squares. 
For step one, we're going to do the four four patch units. So you'll take either your patches or your strips and make the four patch unit. So my four patch unit will look like this. We'll sew these two together, then these two, press the seams, and then sew the two rows together. If you're strip piecing, you sew the two strips together, press the seam, and cut your two and a half inch segments, and then sew two of them together to make the four patch unit. We'll make four of these. The four patches are done. We'll put those off to the side. In step two, we're going to use the B, C, and C, R patches and make four triangle and square units. These go together like this. If you're not familiar piecing these, stay tuned for a tutorial that shows you how to piece the rotary cut pieces and the AccuQuilt pieces as well. To piece the Tri-Rex unit, you turn the piece over like this, and that little notch you cut out you're going to line up with this edge of the triangle. So you have your notch lining up that edge, and then you have your side lining up with this edge. And we're going to start our stitching here and stitch a quarter inch all the way down. When you stitch it, your stitching should start right at this point here, and this should be a quarter of an inch here. So we've stitched all the way down to the bottom, and then when we open it up and press the seam open, it will look like this. This nub up here you have to cut off because it just gets in the way. And down here, if you'll notice, if you'll notice down here, there's also a nub here that you can cut off. And this little angle for the rectangle fabric is sort of cut off a little bit. And that's just fine. It'll be it'll work out just fine. Now we take our other side, which is this, and we do basically the same thing. We're going to match down here. Match the, the where you cut off the little blunt edge right here along this line, and then match the long side here. And we'll start stitching here. If you can see where this V is. Right at that point should be your quarter of an inch and you start there and stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down and you should come off right here at this where this blunt edge was cut off. Here are two of them finished. This is what it looks like before the nubs are cut off. So you have a nub down here and here and then the last one up here. So you trim those off and here's what it looks like trimmed off. These little curved here, sort of curved edges here are just fine. It doesn't matter. It'll be taken up in the seam allowance. It's just how it comes out. If I'm piecing a lot of these units, I will chain piece one side first. So I'll if, say if I'm doing 8, 10, whatever, I'll do all of this side first, press them, and then add the next, the last side next. The dies have cut off all the points here. This gives you a way to match up for your piecing. So we'll take this first one and flip it over. I'm matching this cut here and this edge. I usually start with this one because it matches better. This is at the tip of the triangle. So let's match this here and then match whatever, however it ends up here. Then I'll start stitching at a quarter of an inch and then finish stitching a quarter of an inch down here. Now I wanted to zoom way in so you can see. This is the bottom part, that the part that I matched first, and you can see the stitching comes out almost right on that point. And up here, it doesn't really match any point here, so just be sure you have a quarter of an inch when you start stitching. Now I'll press it open. This is pressed open. This is the bottom part of the triangle, and you can see it, this white part or the side part comes out just a little bit but that's okay and then the top part comes out they meet together at the edge and that's what you want now we're going to flip this over this is how the piece goes 
So we'll flip this over. Now you're going to match the top part of the triangle with this part right here. So match that there. Match the straight edge here and the edges here. Stitch up here. Start here with your quarter of an inch. Going back one step, each time you match your side pieces to your triangle, do the matching at the tip of the triangle. Before we had the tip facing this way and we started our matching down here. Now we have our tip facing this way and we started our matching up here. And here's what it looks like. This is even across the top here and that point is right at your quarter of an inch. And then down here you're off a little bit with your quarter of an inch but that's okay because we did the same thing over here. So now we will press the seams open. And here is your finished triangle and square unit. You see from the tip of this point to the edge is about a quarter of an inch and it's straight across the edge, nothing to cut off here. And then down here you'll see these little bitty pieces kind of come out a little bit. I would trim those off because they might get in the way when you're stitching. There's a little bit peeking over here too. And you'll see that this white part or the side part comes out. It looks like maybe an eighth of an inch comes out on the side. But don't worry about that. It will be taken up in the seam allowance when you sew this unit to another piece. And that's how you stitch the triangle and square with the Accu quilt. Our triangle and square units are ready and I should have told you before both the triangle and square unit and the four patch unit should each measure right now four and a half inches because that's what a four inch finished size measures before we sew them into the block. Now for step three we're going to take the D and E patches and make our square on point. And we'll just put them together like this. We do opposite sides first and press. Then we do the remaining sides and press. If you're not familiar with stitching these, the tutorial for this is at the end of the video right after I show you both of the blocks. Our square on point unit is done and this too should measure four and a half inches right now. Now all we have to do is put the block together and we use our 3x3 three three grid and I'm using my profit board to hold my pieces. We'll start with our square on point in the center. And there's our star. We stitch the top units together, the center and the bottom units, press the seams open and then stitch the rows together. And those are blocks three and four. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Piecing the square on point unit using rotary cutting patches. You have your four half square triangles that go on the corners and your large square in the center that's set on point. Start by piecing opposite sides, flip this over, center the square on the triangle, matching these edges, the long edge of the triangle and one side of the square. You want to see if these triangles on over here on the right and here on the left are roughly the same size. I'm going to go with that. Stitch quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Do this side as well. Press your seams open and if you look these edges extend here trim these off straight in line with the, the side of the square. Put your half square triangle down with the right side facing up and then place this in the center and then check your the size of your triangles overhanging here. You will start stitching right here in this V section where this point meets and this should be a quarter inch from here to the edge of this fabric. Start here, stitch a quarter of an inch, 
all the way to this side and you should come out here at the same part on, on this side and do that on both sides. And here's what the stitching looks like. And now you're going to press your seams open. And here is the finished unit. Now I'll just trim off these little nubs on the sides. And your unit's finished. Piecing the square on point using AccuQuilt. I like to start by piecing opposite sides first. And you're going to place the half square triangle piece on top. We need to center it. I just kind of eyeball it and I'm looking at this, this little triangle of the bottom fabric poking out here. You can barely see it. It's a little triangle poking out here and then on the other side there's a little triangle poking out here. What you want to do is try to get them as close to the same size as possible. And your quarter of an inch should be right here at this point. So you stitch from this point a quarter of an inch all the way down and you come off at this point. And it's more important that you have the quarter of an inch than if you're exactly on the point. And you'll do that for both sides, this side and then this opposite side. Press your seams open. Now we'll flip it over and do the other two sides. And now you have sides that you can match. You see the triangle has the points cut off. These points are going to line up with what we just sewed. So if you look here, you see they line up with this edge, these two edges, here, here, and across the top. Now you'll stitch a quarter of an inch from that point here all the way down to this other point and do that to both sides. If these don't match perfectly, if, if it's like it's not long enough, don't stretch this triangle because you'll just make the unit wonky. Just center it as much as you can and stitch a quarter of an inch. Now we'll just press it open and it will be finished. And there's your finished unit. At some point when you finish your square on point unit you'll have to sew something else to it. And you want to keep these points nice and sharp and sometimes you might be matching it to a seam line or a plain piece of fabric or maybe another point. And I'm going to show you how to keep these points nice. If you've pressed your seam open, you will see where these three fabrics intersect and form a point right here. That's your point on the back and it's also your point on the front. So you can stitch with this part on top and you'll be able to make sure that your point stays there. I take a pin and put it right there at the point and then pick it up on this back side and in this case I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch and then put that right in the seam line. That way the point will end up right on the seam line. Put your fabric pieces together and line up the top edges or the edges that you need to line up and make sure your pin is perpendicular, goes straight down into the fabric like that. If you're at an angle like this, your points won't match. So make sure they're straight, perpendicular to the fabric, and then put it into the fabric. When you start sewing, line up these edges here. Start at your quarter of an inch and sew all the way down. And you're going to aim for this point where that pin goes into the fabric and you'll know that you're matching the point and the seam line on the back. And straighten your bottom edge again and continue stitching a quarter of an inch off. And here's what it's, the stitching looks like if you can barely see it on here with this thread. It goes right across here leaving the point open. You're not stitching over the point. And then if I flip it over you'll see it's not exactly a quarter of an inch there but that doesn't matter because what you want is the point to match the seam allowance here. Now just press the seam open and you're finished. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.